So starting with math discourse, math discourse simply is conversation about the math and it's a, a kind of a three pronged thing. So there's the teacher side and the student side. When you allow students to talk amongst themselves about the math, about a problem, about a concept, then it allows the teacher to hear thinking. It allows the teacher to hear possible misconceptions from what they feel they presented in the classroom and during their instruction versus what the student actually took in. And you get to hear it before they turn an assignment for a final grade or a summative grade. So if there's an advantage there for the teacher, and then the other two prongs are on the student side where it gives the student the opportunity to say things in his or her own words to cement in understanding. And also for, as they're saying that another student is hearing the perspective of a concept through a peer, through someone who, you know, may see things more closely to the way they see things versus an adult, you know, teacher who's, who knows it and they're, you know, we're trying to explain it to them. So definite um, advantages to promoting math discourse and conversation in the classroom. But again, thinking in terms of equitable learning, more students are going to be reached when you allow that conversation to happen. So instead of it being a one way teacher to student and then assignment, it's teacher to student, then student to student, back to the teacher, there is much more opportunity there for students um, success with that information. So how do you promote or reflect math discourse in your classroom? Well, when I talk about math discourse, I make it intentional. With that being said, intentional means I use the word community quite a bit in my classroom or my resource room. What does community okay. mean? Community means we rely on each other, mm -hmm. not just the teacher. The teacher here is just not the expert. I love it. You know, we learn from each other. We communicate things in different ways. We see things in different ways. We represent things in different ways. We use our hands in different ways. So it is important for students to talk amongst each other, to get the information out because it may help. I'm, I'm a better visual learner. I know I'm a better visual learner. Sometimes I miss a lot of things when people say something to me, mm -hmm. but if I have a student who is great at getting the way I present things visually, but they're hearing something, they're able to communicate it in a different way. I'm listening to them communicate, but they probably are coming off a, a lot better to a student who's also a better auditory learner. So I think about that. I make sure I facilitate the discussion. If they're working on a community group work problem, per se, or worksheet, or I excel something I make sure again I try to make sure everything is community all the way leading up to that task because again this is the resource room my goal is to get them to be independent but in reality we do a lot of things together we have study groups if we're studying for let's say a teacher certification test we've probably worked together in a study group somewhere along the line so I'm also teaching the kids about studying together and creating community and so I use vocabulary. I use anchor charts. I try to make things relate to real world examples. I build upon background knowledge. I may show pictures of the real world and try to connect it to the math or the vocabulary. So they're making connections all the time. If they're at the board doing group work, I'm going to ask those guiding questions. It could be a question. I'm not going to ask a simple question like, well, what did you get for the number three? That doesn't help them think about thinking or communicate. All they're doing is restating to me their answer. That's not what I'm looking for. I am looking for how did they derive to that answer? Mm -hmm. So I would ask questions like, what is that question asking you? Okay, well, what do you think you would do? What is your attack strategy? What is your plan? What is What operation do you think you would use here? Well, why would you use that operation? Is there a certain word in the problem that made you think about that? So yeah, it may take us five, 10 minutes before we actually finish. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, right. but the key is they're able to communicate it and they're thinking about the thinking because every problem is not going to be the exact same. Right. So they need to know 
the process on how to get there. It's all about process. It's never about the answer. Absolutely. And I love that you said you don't ask questions just like, what did you get for number three? Because the other piece to discourse, like I said, it is teacher hearing what the student is thinking. But a lot of times, especially early on, that is here, being able to hear a student explain is going to be predicated upon the questions that the teacher is going to ask. And that's a huge part to promoting math discourse in your classroom. Are you asking open-ended questions that will allow for the student to think and to answer in more than just one or two words? Uh, and that's extremely important. So I'm glad you, you've recognized that and you use that as part of your strategy to promote that and facilitate that discussion.